Definitely a style of champion Destiny has really enjoyed playing as well and has been uh, on point with these hooks lately. Wait a minute. Volturno getting himself hooked. It is over in this bottom lane. And it is not a replay. This is oh, real life. Destiny is on fire today. Oh, oh, Destiny! The man don't miss! He's in your mind! Destiny finds the hook! How does Destiny do it? It's gonna be common, it's deleted! He just finds the perfect hooks! Welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk. We just got to look at some of the magic that was a playing party to the 3-0 week that Immortals kicked things <laughs> off with us last week. That was Destiny not planned. on Thresh. Well done, gents. Well done. Uh, but Raz, I think that that's really where the main story lies when it comes to this Immortal squad is how hot they started and how much of a slowdown it's been here in week two. 3-0 to 0-2 looking to recapture some of that week one magic. Pull the brakes, <laughs> don't go into an 0-3. But like, in terms of just watching the gameplay, last week I felt was a little bit more indicative. I think they had great drafts throughout in those ones, but they also just had like great overall team play. This one started off, of course, day one, coming into reward uh, uh, pretty and not having, uh, you know, insanity for that game. And then in the second game, of course, like that was where it was kind of uh, unfortunate. So. I don't think it's all that bad, right? Mm -hmm. but they do need to ride, get back on track. Yeah, maybe some lenience to be given, given uh, you know the substitution on the first day of the week here. But yeah. regardless, you don't want to go 0-3. And so, hi, I think <laughs> at the end of the day, we got to start talking about what was working for them when they were in those winning positions. Where does it come from? Right, for me, when I look at IMT, I'm trying to think about how this team wins, how they pull in the victories. You gotta look at the bot lane, right? Yes. Especially with this current meta, where you're doing a lot of bruisers tap that don't scale. Like, if you're playing Lee Sin, I guess Gwyn kind of scales hard, but like a lot of the bruisers, they don't hard carry late game. Same with the mid laners. You need your AD carry, hyper carry, to pull through the wins, and I think he plays really well. So I want to see more Rays playing things like Kog'Maw, maybe today, Kog'Maw Lulu, Kog'Maw Braum. Give me something like that, I think they can pull it out. Yeah, and it's how they, you know, all of them think of how they win their games, right? Because mm -hmm. even though I think their best performing players is Xerxes and Revenge, a lot of it is pathing towards the bottom side of the map. It's uh, about Revenge knowing when to TP bot side and help them out. So I think, yes, they must start successfully for them to win their games or they mm -hmm. seem a little like uh, headless chickens. Well, I like that note as well, pointing towards the top side. Even if the focus and the ultimate late game carry <laughs> might be the bot lane, yeah. it's the rest of the team that still has to find a way to Teleport play. Down right. Teleport exactly. bot. Yeah, Everyone right. come bot. bot. Let's make go. Know who your carry is, index behind that person, uh, and make it a full team effort. Either way, Immortals is facing off against Team Liquid today, and our man Mark is literally standing by to break down some tech from their newest member, Jenkins, in the State Farm Neighborhood oh, hey. Tactics. How's look at him! He's even wearing his Sunday best and everything, Mark. They yeah, dressing up today. Good. I want to look good for this segment. Uh, I was listening to the cast yesterday, and Azael was kind of, you know, talking about Jenkins and his performance on GP. He said he's a really good GP and had a good laning phase. Then he sort of walked it back and self-corrected because he did get solo killed, and, and uh, Azael was kind of like, well, maybe I overstated it. But I think when you actually look at it, both are true. When you watch his actual trading patterns, Jenkins usually actually does a pretty good job. He's able to step into some of impact usages of the Q on Aatrox, dodges out on them, gets good trades with his Graph of the Undying proc on his Qs, actually works in some trial by fires when he does do that step forward juke. He usually has his barrels in a pretty good spot to be able to work those into some of his trades as well. You'll see one where he's able to get a barrel proc to get reset his trial by fire, then gets the auto attack off. And generally, even when he gets ganked, he's able to turn the trade back around so it's not setting up a repeat dive. And overall, I would say watching Jenkins' GP play is pretty impressive. Even in one of those team fights, he ends up having around 5,000 damage done he was doing a really good job up until that solo kill happened and i think that's one of the instances that obviously sticks out in people's minds um but it was a situation where it felt like it wasn't his individual mistake necessarily that got him solo killed so much as trying to work with his team and i think if that's one area that you could say is a weakness for him here he probably could have kept running towards the turret and flashed to turret's safety uh instead he turns around for the tp to work with jensen and be like i'm gonna bait him back in and then he gets himself killed and it sets up this really weird sequence and so when you look at that, and I think back in that game, I would actually say I was okay with that performance. I thought his GP was good. It was more about the team situation when he got caught out in the late game, more so than the individual mechanics that he has right now. And I think that's something to keep an eye on for Jenkins is how he's starting to actually integrate with the rest of the team. Yeah, I, I uh, agree with a lot of that. I think when it comes to his GP play, spectacular. Uh, and also another thing as well is his cannon, like the picks that he's good on. Um, 
It's interesting because Team Liquid is a championship team. They're looking to be able to get that, to that point. And you have to compare it to the person he's replacing and Alfari, who is the best top laner in the league, right? And if I were to put Jen Jenkins in a place right now, for me, he's a bottom five top laner. And that's okay. Like, you're coming into the LCS. There is going to be rough competition mm -hmm. to get to where the team wants to be. So it's about that trek. It's about being comfortable and to the point that he made, which is like team play. Because I think all of that... It needs improvement. I'm curious, just as a former player yourself, when you take a look at a series of clips like that, understanding that it does end in a solo kill, I mean, do you see the kind of fundamentals that would give you confidence that this guy will eventually be able to create his own advantages in lane and remove some of those mistakes that hand it all back? For me, Jenkins on Game Plank, yeah, Smith, he's not a bottom five top laner on <laughs> okay. Game Plank. He's uh, like a top plank, three. But not on Game Plank, I'm, I've yet to see that. Gotcha. I really like his Game Plank gameplay. Uh, Get, uh, that's kind of hard a, to say. It's a hard one to yes, say. Yes. Yeah. I watched his Lulu the first week. I don't like his Lulu at all. Okay. So I'll have to see him improve on the other champions. But getting a solo kill isn't the end of the world. It happens to everyone. Every player in the world has got it. I was watching Faker stream last night. He got solo kill too. It happens, right? I don't so believe you. So it's a thing that happens. He I, gets one. I was with you until you said Faker. <laughs> his game plank is great. And then, the then everything you said after that was discredited. <laughs> uh, either way, that, hey, that's the part of the journey of becoming a pro player, right? And right. creating a, a long career is, is developing that champion pool and the ability on every single one of them to perform. Don't go anywhere, because when we return, it's Jenkins who will be put to the test by Immortals. We'll see you there. I'm still, I'm still here. <laughs> yes, you are, Mark. Thank you.
Welcome back to the LCS for game to the day, Immortals versus TL. We are Froby, Freak, and Kobe, first edition, mint condition League of Legends casters. How's <laughs> I like it going? It. Yes, we are first edition, but we're still going strong, baby. 10 out of 10 <laughs> in the sleeve worth thousands, easily. Someone has been making a big splash on Twitter, of course. That is the perfect human, Core JJ, who continues his reign of being better than everyone at everything. He has hit the <laughs> highest LP ever recorded in NA solo queue yesterday. I mean, just one the, of the many. Core the JJ most things. competitive solo queue, the most highly prized, the most prestigious. Yes. This man just does it all. Honestly, though, uh, Core JJ really does put in so much work oh, yeah. for the region overall. You know, we've talked about it so many times about organizing the in-houses, making educational videos and content for other players and supports to learn from, yep. uh, slamming everybody in solo queue. Uh, added in to the that. LCS also. <laughs> and, and in the <laughs> LCS. Um, so, so, you know, definitely all, you know, all props always to, uh, to core. Keep up the good work, my friend. That is not to overshadow or or distract you from the fact that there has been quite a quite a drama storm surrounding Team Liquid, you yeah. know, over our, the the benchings and then also within some of the individual play. Now, if we get into the the nitty gritty of it, your champ select for Team Liquid. Um, I was kicking myself so much because I didn't go through with my gangplank pick on my fantasy Ooh. for uh, for Alfari. So I fan now. Yeah, exactly. I I, <laughs> I, I late submitted them, uh, so didn't get credit there. But w the question becomes, you know, he has looked quite good on gangplank, um, and, and people obviously, immortals included, want to delve deeper into that champion pool. You know, Jenkins. Uh, you know, has been able to fill in quite decently for Team Liquid. I think his gangplank has been a big factor. Um, but the other big question for Champ Select for them has been is Jensen and, and his Viego and some of the other melee carries too. You know, like Lee Sin and, and you hear rumblings about maybe Team Liquid <laughs> a little bit uh, slow on adapting to some of these very powerful solo laners, yeah. one of which has been picked. Uh, yes, to your Revenge delight. is laughing. That man was smiling, grinning ear to ear. He's like, <laughs> I got to play Gwen, it's my turn. Definitely love it, uh, and, and I quite agree. I think that's the only correct reaction when you when you get a first pick, Gwen. Even if you do have to uh, give a cross on the other side, something like Ferris that is very frequently banned and does mean your bottom lane, which the analyst S I think correctly highlighted uh, for Immortals, uh, is going to have a, a much more difficult time because various lanes, whatever support it's going to be, are, are quite punishing. So speaking of correct reactions, though, uh -huh. uh, you, you, <laughs> you can figure out what good lane matchups into Gwen are. Chief among them actually is Singed. Uh, and and like I want to see an impact singe come out at some point. He's not in this game, but he's one of the singe players in the LCS. Actually ruins Gwen's day. She can't really do anything about that in the matchup, and you still have a decent frontliner to play it out. Like there are a bunch of top laners. None of them are what people are playing in pro right now. Like none of her actually really weak matchups that beat her in lane and still do well in team fights. None of those are like in meta, and I'm curious if those will eventually be introduced by team. You know what? I'm on board, Freak. I want to see some Singe, and I want to see him proxy. Yeah. I want that Singe dying to towers, executing <laughs> in the fountain. I want that Singe all over the map because that is that's another angle we haven't seen in the LCS yeah. in in quite a long time. So uh, let's get right back to this champ select though. Yeah, uh, I would chance. give I would give your your chances at seeing a sense yeah. maybe point zero zero yeah, two. Yeah, it's low. I gave the Darius swap to jungle a, a similar chance though, and that happened. And so uh, here we go. We get the Akali in Jensen's hand. This is what I want to see when I see Jensen on melee. I want to see him on Akali or Echo. And yeah, everybody's going to meet him on the Echo with the Zanya Sync, but that is one thing out of a very strong Echo career for him. Um, but his Akali has always been his best assassin champion in my eyes. Um, and maybe a LeBlanc is probably number two, but this is one that he's very confident with, you know? Uh, and Akali right now in a very strong state as well. So all you really have to do is worry about the early levels, um, which which he generally plays quite safe and, it, and isn't heavily punished. So uh, does actually look good as far as the champ select, which we had a lot of questions for yeah. Team Liquid kind of swirling around. And, and some of the good counters banned away as well for Team Liquid. The Jace, so you don't win really early on with all the, the ranged poke, the Lee Sin dropped off the table as well as, uh, you know, the invisibility counter. Malphite has an attack speed slow, but wants to... Riven's another one, by the way. Riven is also an exceptionally good 
counter. But please, please lock this in. No! <laughs> I have to say, my respect for Jenkins would probably double if you pick Riven into revenge. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And, and and then you end up slamming him. Yeah. Like, and I, I honestly just, I don't even know if I can even measure it, but that that would draw some yeah. respect yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come into the LCS, you <laughs> slam down a Riven in front of Revenge's uh -huh. face as he's laughing on stage about his Gwen pick. Uh -huh. that, as you hard counter That would be some hype. Okay, they yeah. still have a late pick. <laughs> they haven't shown it yet for you, yeah, so yeah. Uh, we can hold out. Uh, we, we could hold out, maybe. We could hope here. Lucian going to come through again. Also a very strong lane bully across the LCS. Has not been terribly successful at converting those games mm -hmm. into wins. Uh, you know, middling success elsewhere. Uh, generally reasonably successful, but uh, hasn't quite converted in the LCS. I will say that I actually have liked Insanity on uh, AD carry mids a yeah, lot. a lot. You know, he was one of the ones that first embraced the Tristana. Yep. Uh, he, he definitely plays them more aggressively than some of the other mid laners we've seen using a lot of those AD carries. So I would want a jungler that ganks, and there you go, a Grog is picked up. Premier ganking jungler. I love that Grogus is back in uh, because there's so many options here. Uh, it's not a champion that focuses on clear speed as, as we've had uh, so much in the past. And Zerse is the guy to do it. Uh, so this is, to me, a perfect combination for the Lucian mid lane. A lot of threat here. You will die Ooh. within a body slam flash uh, to this. Akali goes top? Or is that Victor top? I think it's Akali going top here. So Jenkins, I know you were hyping up Jensen's Akali, and I agree he's good at it. Akali has some nice situations, though, as well. Of course, keep in mind, you can never immune the ulti. She's going to eventually be in that circle and hit. And I would say one of the biggest things is that Akali can avoid these all-ins that, that Gwen is so good at forcing. Uh, Gwen dominates a lot of these bruisers that she can just E on top of, takes Ignite for top lane, and, and then beats you. Akali will... Uh, you know, have evasive maneuvers to be able to yeah. deal with it. Shirk and Flip, Shroud, lots of answers there. So I don't see it as a, oh, we are going to have, you know, Pryo or anything in this lane. Obviously, Akali still going to have to scale up um, and does scale incredibly well after the, uh, you know, addition to extra damage uh, towards the E and towards the ultimate. So uh, do like that option as well. Okay, gonna be a fun game here. Revenge gets Gwen answered on the other side by Jenkins on Akali. A spicy top lane matchup for sure. Immortals had a 3-0 start to their summer split. They immediately catapulted to, I believe, sixth place in the standings, but then they began to falter once again. I want to see if they can end week two on a win. Team Liquid with their new top laner, with their new look. Decent, some highs, some lows, but I would still favor them against Immortals here. Yeah, I think that this is definitely a a champ select they can they can navigate a little bit more comfortably than some of them that we've seen in the past. Maybe with the uh, the kind of wild card up there, Jensen or uh, Jenkins in the top lane yeah. uh, on the Akali, who also has actually taken Ignite and Revenge didn't take Ignite oh, on the Gwen wow. because Akali uh, has uh, you know so many options of trying to avoid the all in. Uh, I kind of actually like that uh, a bit of a swap, and, and Jank is kind of turning the table here. So for a Doran Shield to withstand any of the poke that comes through, double Conqueror there as well, expecting longer duration fights. It is also always interesting to me because, you know, Xin Zhao has now become a super highly prized pick. Uh, very strong early game, lots of ganking opportunities, but when you pick it with something like a Victor mid and an Akali top that is zero playmaking until uh, you know level six and then victor even longer than that you're gonna have to scale way longer uh versus the lucian the lucian's constantly gonna be putting pressure there yep. um it, it actually kind of reduces and, and funnels a lot of those jungle options towards the bottom lane speaking of bottom lane kobe segways are here check out proview.lollysports.com this one rays versus tactical for your free one of the game if you want to see mid lane pay us a little bit of money you know, subscribe, <laughs> subscribe to ProView <laughs> and get the other matchups. I honestly uh, almost expected you to follow that up with, like, uh, subscribe with your Twitch Primes now to <laughs> LTS channel because I don't think that they even have that available. I don't know if that works. <laughs> Uh, uh, honestly, though, nice uh, nice sell out there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Right back to the Zin Zhao <laughs> topic, though. Santorin is starting topside on the red uh, where you would expect him to start. But again, Varus Braum here. Uh, not only does it have uh, high potential for harassment in this lane, as you can see there, uh, Braum playing up past the range minion line, easily able to end, land his Q as well as Tactical hitting the arrow there. And you know, Tactical and Core JJ. 
they have always loved to play as aggressively as possible, given whatever uh, you know matchup they possibly have. Um, so definitely want to see if they can actually push this to the limits. It's the Hail of Blades, uh, you know, Varus, which I I'm a big fan of uh, because I love lethality and Muramana builds mm -hmm. for the champion. So uh, hopefully we do see that from Tactical. There is no like giant tank on the team that you want to have an on hit Varus for. Sure. Uh, so I think it's kind of a no brainer there for him. Speaking of early choices, I believe Jenkins started with Shuriken Flip at level one, uh, which normally you just start, you start Q, you die point strike, you just you throw got it out, you wait yeah. clear. But Gwen's gonna dash at you and try to audience. You just like flip backwards, you're like, I won that trade. Yeah. Later. That's what we're saying for the matchup. Akali is avoidance uh, answer to the Gwen all in yeah. possibilities topside. And again, that's why Revenge also takes uh, Flash here instead of Ignite. Uh, because the Kali, if you ignite her, just backs right out. Well, Jensen lost. He missed the cannon. This lane is now literally unwinnable. Uh, I'm sorry, but it, it's just over. Uh, congratulations. You are the insanity. worst kind of solo queue teammate. <laughs> <laughs> Freak uh, is literally level two. Yeah, yeah. Spam pinging I'll, his mid lane. I'll be actually taking blue right now. I just question mark <laughs> ping that one over there. Um, you know, just let him know, like, hey, you screwed up, buddy. Um, Freak is constantly using his F keys to spy on every other lane yeah, to see yeah. if they miss the cannon. Because then I'll know, like, hey, you miss cannons normally. I just walk over oh like that. God. It's 900 now. Like I can't. I can't miss it. Uh, make sure and then you open up Twitter and you publicly flame them. Not yes. just in the game. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. back to this one. Uh, Xin Zhao did route towards the bottom side. Scuttle Crab picked up here for the extra vision to allow bottom lane to continue pushing. Um, should be no surprise though. They, they can easily suss out that uh, Zerse did uh, clear towards the top side. And, and as we said, Jenkins is going to play a lot of these early stages uh, versus Gwen quite respectfully. Um, so not going to put himself into a position to get Gragas ganked. All right. Well, we've pushed him though. Ward's coming down. Nice, fairly aggressive ward by Revenge. Spots the tri brush path, which is a pretty common one that Sinjao might take after finishing Krugs, for example. The bot laners just uh, scuffling a little bit, but nothing major. Is it's going to be the first TP for Insanity. Keep in mind he is back in the roster. Immortals brought in pretty yesterday as a reward from Good Academy play. They did not really intend to fully change the roster out. And hey, one out of 27 games, you can afford to take an L, but it doesn't look very good. But yeah, have been impressed with Insanity. Think he is a very, very good player. Happy to see him back here as well as Revenge looks for a small trade. Sidesteps the true damage and Jenkins side, still feeling comfortable. This is one thing because, uh, you know, so much talk is about, oh yeah, Gwen OP. But I want to highlight like some of the, of the reasons why she wins so many of these all-ins is because there's so much power in hitting the center of your scissors. It applies the true damage, applies your passive. So dodging perpendicular. When you're playing against Gwen, there's there's actually quite few counterplay <laughs> options, sure. but that is one of them. When she comes at you with the scissors, if you have any sort of instant dash or, or you have any sort of time uh, movement, keep in mind that the center of the scissors is actually quite thin. Um, and, and perpendicular movement is oftentimes your best bet since you're almost never going to be able to outrange it uh, if she if she's able to dash in and starts casting anyway. And the big chunk of damage is at the end anyway, right? So like even if you're like, oh, you got me, like as long as you're moving in time, you're, you're going to dodge some of it at the very least, especially when she stacks up stitches. Uh, mid lane is going to push away from Jensen, so has to go for this one if he doesn't want to drop CS on the way to the recall and the TP back. Uh, Insanity already on his walk up again. Went for Cole after the first recall. Double Longsword in now as well. As Jenkins forced Revenge to take the first recall. They both get Leeching Leer though. And they're both going to be on their way back. Leech is in my game every single game, Freak. Mm -hmm. Insanity going to keep the cannon uh, to be able to deny some of these minions here. Finishes off uh, all the range ones. Teleport back though means nothing's really going to come of it. Torn. Honestly, this is probably a counter gank hover. I don't know if Insanity's actually been dashing in to, to be super aggressive uh, at the moment because he doesn't have very good vision at all. Lucian, you have to kind of temper your aggression. You can't just always be dashing in, going for these trades, knowing you want to you know, get those health leads, uh, and he does play it a little bit cautiously there. Uh, good transition from Team Liquid, though. Hook from Destinies doesn't hit uh, Dragon, so we know it's been pulled out. Goes, yeah, we don't, have, we don't really have pressure. We don't have our people around, so not going to have a real attempt to fight for this one. Uh, they might come over, though, but Dragus out of range. Ooh. But hey, enough health still on the Dragon that it's not going to be taken before he can show up. So here comes the Body Slam in. Decent damage. Grudge has a shield. Flashes a safety. How about the smite coming across, though, 450 apiece. It resets. They're no stuck revenge. inside the pit now. Who's going to get it? Great smite comes in for Xerxes. Grabs that one, flashes out of the pit. Team stays alive. Flash down, but Dragon 
goes to Immortal. Yeah, and the teleport advantage where Jenkins teleports down thinking they could force the fight. Immortal's comms have got to be so clear right there. They, they keep everybody calm. Hey, we are going to try and pull a heist here. Get the dragon down, burn it, and evade. Everybody has dashes. They can jump over the wall, uh, and they actually get it out with using Jenkins TP, pushing in the wave, extra turret play, plus they have teleport advantage. That is a resounding victory for Immortals. Popping off here right now for Immortals, yeah. even though the gold lead is tied and nobody's dead, that is a, a giant macro lead for them. Very nicely executed. Uh, you know, with, with just some restraint, not mm -hmm. just, you know, immediately calling the handshake on the teleport saying, yeah, okay, fine, if they get the engage. It's the confidence of the rest of your team to tell you, no, steady hand there, we will get out. If we get caught, it's our fault. <laughs> you know, you can, uh, can flame us later, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. On, on the day, that's a good hands by Zerk's hit a grab, obviously a very good smite as well. And yes, a plate and, you know, a lot of a wave denied. So good stuff. 300 gold right now to Immortals. Hook gonna be sidestepped or walked away from Zerk's say. Gonna put the barrel down. No ulti to come out. Brom shield can finish. Always guarantee you don't hit Varus. And we see the ramifications of this play immediately. And these are going to continue for uh, for the next, you know, five minutes of this game uh, while Revenge is holding this teleport advantage uh, over Team Liquid. Constant bottom side plays. It's a level six Gragas with Flash. This is Predator Gragas with Flash ready to go. Zerse is a playmaking machine. He has to be respected. Uh, so maybe, uh, you know, sometimes when Gragas players are in this position, you see them just body slamming at people to get them to flinch. Uh, you know, not going immediately for the body slam flash and seeing if they will respect it. Uh, I actually kind of like that a lot, uh, kind of fishing around for flashes when, you know, uh, the lanes haven't been able to burn them themselves. And then you can just get the real pressure with those return visits. Look soon for the return visits then as Revenge and Jenkins keep battling each other. There is no flash and no TP on the Akali, so not the best escape tools. Realistically, could be punished. Uh, right now, Zerxe is going to be top side of the map. We know Rift Herald is alive, ready to be claimed. See if they send supports over. Right now, a defensive control ward comes in from Santorum, but that ward can be killed as Revenge can just walk up with his top lane priority and say, thanks for 30 gold, I'm out. I'm out indeed. Top lane control feeling quite good for the Gwen side. Both of them with Dark Seals, though. So we'll keep track of the uh, the Rift Herald fight if it does ensue because you will have some kind of multiplicative rewards here. Zin Zhao clearing out the vision and kind of threatening, uh, but, but doesn't get the extra clear. I believe there's another ward inside just seeing the Rift Herald uh, that does give them the information. So... Immortals are aware of this, and you see the bottom lanes are moving up too. Ooh, Revenge forced to flash away. Jenkins! Ult comes across. Jenkins! Ignite should not be enough. No solo kill. Tactical force flash away, hit by Zap, and that means get ready for body slam. Sidesteps that, but when does the cast come down? There we go. It's an easy one to pick up. First blood goes to raise on the Jinx. Team Liquid get an advantage in one part of the map, freaking everybody looking up to the top side where Jenkins is forcing revenge under tower. But in the transition of the bottom lanes up towards the objective to the Rift Herald, they get caught in the river and that Predator Gragas didn't have to flash, didn't have to ultimate. It's just the Predator active uh, there for, for Zerse and First Blood rewarded another very big victory for them. Here's another look at it. Tactical Core JJ trying to work through the river to get up to this possible Rift Herald fight. And Immortals say, you know what? You can finish up that Rift Herald. We're going to take First Blood instead. Get the guaranteed gold there on Tactical. Uh, and like the uh, like the execution, it, even with the uh, Body Slam going over the wall, you're cutting off avenues for him to escape. And he couldn't. So look at that. Immortals 1,300 gold ahead now. Still... Uh, do have the Herald on the other side, though. Exactly. And there's some kind of guaranteed value that's, that, that you're going to get. Plenty of time to use it uh, on one of these turrets that still have all of their plates. We can already see the trend here uh, for Immortals really coming out swinging uh, versus Team Liquid. Insanity at the top of the charts with that Lucian, as we said, from Champ Select. But uh, he's got a Thresh here with a Lantern. Yeah. No harm, no foul. Yeah, barely even dealt meaningful damage, honestly. He's still at 80%. Obviously, uh, Guardian Thresh becoming more and more common. That's just a really big shield that blocks into the damage that mm -hmm. came out. So 
He's totally fine. Jensen clears out most of the wave, though. Not hard with a uh, level 9 victor with the E evolve. Misses a couple CS, but whatever. Here's Herald Summon. If Jensen wanted, he could knock down the first turret individually and then share in the rest. Okay, going to claim that one. Going to get half of the next few plays as well. And now a push onto the side as Jensen's on the way out. Has burned Flash, but Cass going to put him right back in. Easy claim. Nicely done. Zooks is up at second kill for the team, and Sanity knocks it down. Ugh, that's why I love just waddling at people as Gragas. Zerse doesn't even have to flash on him. He just waddles at him. They get the flash out, and then he still gets in range. Gets the ultimate there. Uh, and Rift Herald value has already been expended. Freak is a thousand gold lead now with the extra kill for Immortals. Plus the dragon already in tow. They're doing a very good job uh, of snowballing off of this. Looking really good. Immortals at 10 and 13, looking for number 11. Want to add more to those wins here as wards go down, dragons to be attacked. Team Liquid will tie up the dragon score. So the recall timings, wave timings, a little unfortunate for Immortals will not get any other good objectives. Rocket unlikely to steal and does not. I will also say, uh, you know, trying to funnel the Rift Trail turret plates there into Jensen, he was able to get, uh, you know, the first one off by hand, as you said. So he's Victor. You're always telling your team, we're scaling. I'm scaling. I'm scaling. I'm scaling. He's almost level 11 here. Um, unfortunately, you know, they they haven't had any positive kills for Team Liquid, so no kills or assists to help him with, um, you know, any of the upgrades. But still kind of trudging along there for Team Liquid, as uh, as has become uh, kind of the case uh, in, in some of the recent uh, situations. Jenkins had a pretty good all-in earlier, but was unable to find the kill on Akali uh, versus Revenge there on the top side. Uh, his Ignite is back up, though. And since it's so much shorter of a cooldown than the Flash, maybe uh, he can actually uh, make it stick this time around. They might try. Revenge still about 40 seconds of the Flash is up, as you're mentioning. Ultimately, and yeah, tower gets attacked. No more plates to be claimed. Those are gone. So turrets are very frail now. They now take full damage, functionally tree damage from all forms of it. And you can see mid turret down dangerously low, about about 1,000. Imagine they had a Ziggs. The turret should be dead right now. Interesting yeah. uh, build I want to talk about, too, because Blabber did this as well earlier, and there have been so many Xin Zhao builds. Um, you, uh, there are a lot more offensive ones for solo queue, like uh, Eclipse, Shield Bow. Uh, we've seen a lot of Gore Drinker here. We've seen Divine Sunder. And we have also seen two of these Sunfire Zin Zhaos. Um, and, and at least for the data for Solo Queue, the Frostfire is actually the higher, if you're going Bomby Cinder item tank, uh, win rate for, for Zin Zhao. And the Slow Fields actually can have a, a decent effect uh, in a comp like this too, when you do have a Victor that is trying to scale up and be this big area damage. But the, the Sunfire buffs were quite nice for the jungle, so definitely a very competitive auction there. If you are going full tank, and just bye -bye. deleted Gale Force for the Execute, and Sanity claims kill number two. Is, is Zerse ever even going to have to flash? He just keeps no. on getting them. Another hook! Okay, big damage. The turn gets the ulti across. Means he's not taking a lot of damage, but now they get back in a melee range, and he is just getting run down. Gets some tankiness, gets shot. Raze claims the kill, and a second one. The Marksman getting all the gold, five to zero. TL have only a dragon to their name as Core JJ is running for dear life and Raze shuts him down for kill number three. I got a spoiler because we got the them on stage. Oh shoot! Woo! Celebrating over here. 1v1. And this 1v1 goes to Jenkins. Who cares about Gwen? Who cares about Alfari? It's Jenkins Day, baby! Jenkins finds it on Gwen with the Akali. The Ignite does make the difference here as well in the all-in. Revenge, he didn't have any area to actually flash there. Uh, I mean, we're, we're just going to keep on rolling these kills on the Victor in mid lane, sitting duck there with no flash. So Xerxes, again, didn't have to flash. Finds another engage in the river off of Destiny's hook. They pull in Santorin, and since their mid laner is already dead, uh, there's so much more threat behind that steal. Insanity barely surviving because they get the last uh, tick of damage there to get the execute. And then Raze, uh, I like this flash forward as well to, to get excited initially. And then he gets in range for the zap to land the slow, lands the ultimate there, gets the extra kill. And it's, it is just Immortals blowing this game wide open. It's looking good. Imperial Mandate for Xerxes, by the way. I don't know if that's the more common one. As now Jensen, he's going to get away from this one. 
Insanity dashing. Gale Force is actually to get away from the, the Chaos Storm even more. Centaurian, if he gets in range, it's some decent damage, but not going to happen. Man, I, I too still want to, even with how how much spotlight should be on you know, Immortals team play and how much they are stomping this game versus uh, Team Liquid. We still got to give some props there to, uh, you know, to Jenkins on the top side. You know, Ignite is so effective versus Gwen in, in cutting the healing. Her kit just has so much healing in it uh, with the passive, but also with the build with the root, uh, Rift Maker and Conquer. And, uh, you know, he, he takes the all in there, does find the actual kill this time after, uh, you know, getting the advantage, yeah. but no extra gold last time. I'd say that's really the only thing that Team Liquid would have to celebrate uh, so far from this game, though. Everything else is going Immortal's way. It is Raze on his Jinx, which he has 100% win rate in the LCS, uh, I believe, still, with the nice. champion. And he's looking to keep it that way. Looking good so far, honestly. No complaints. 3,000 if your round is the gold lead. Essence Reaver is done for Insanity. He's on two items now. And honestly, just for TL, they're just catching farm. Uh, I mentioned it a bit ago, the mandate in for Xerxes. Definitely interesting. It's obviously gives the team some movement speed. He obviously lands spells pretty reliably. All right. Double buffs now on Insanity as well. So a little bit more power in this solution for this dragon set up. And Immortals, honestly, they do have a, a possibility of like Xerxes trying to trying to be the front person, but they don't have a lot of a lot of tanky stats. So maybe it's revenge makes an opening here. Uh, before they try and find that follow-up. They're going to just give the turret. They said, you know what? Vision's not ours. We don't care. We'll just take mid lane for free. And, well, as a trade, I really should say is the more accurate statement. But now it means they get the crash in Tier 2. And if they play hard, they could actually knock down the entire turret here. They've got the gold lead. Like, how easily could TL even team fight you? They do knock the turret down. The marksmen do walk up. Insanity and Raze knock that down. So, hey, I like that one. A thousand gold for an Ocean Drake when no one's close to Soul. That's Immortals growing their lead. Yeah. I'm looking for angles for, for the initiation because I'm like, okay, you know, this very significant lead that they have. However, since the early dragons are already split and you're playing into a Braum that also has vision advantage, does make sense to go for the trade instead um, and just convert immediately into a wide open mid lane, uh, giving up that dragon. Even with that lead, have to respect the powerful disengage there from Braum and the possibilities when you have no intel on a Kali. Uh, definitely respecting that assassination power. As much as you are ahead in gold, you know, th these are very squishy champions. They're building all damage over here with the yep. Lucian and the Jinx, both very viable targets that Jenkins Ooh, could. Ooh, mistimed uh, flash from Zerg, so he didn't get over it. Pressed a little too early. Well, he didn't have to use it a lot in the early game, so uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Gets one done. Nice evasive maneuvers as well by uh, Tactical Ulti. Flashes out as well. Let's see if they capitalize off this deep vision, though. They're looking for more picks. Destiny off these control wards. Fishing around for some hooks. So they can get some uh, easy counter jungling done. And blue. Okay. Revenge is like, I don't actually need any more haste. Don't really need mana. She has very friendly mana go. cost. That is the shield up for 4JJ. Rooted in place. Puts down the ult. Jumps back to a teammate. And now Immortals... Well, the health bar is still pretty high. They shouldn't be feeling in too much danger. Indeed, they get to knock down the camps, and Insanity is still on the split push. So bot lane tier one about to drop. And it's going to be three turrets to one here for Immortals. Since nobody actually died there, you can, we can at least point out some of the small things, like, uh, you know, Revenge, when he's trying to get out of there on Gwen, um, you always want to try and find something to auto attack after you E so you can get your, your cooldown reduction there, especially when you're running away. That's when it's hard. Uh, and it's supposed to be kind of the counter plan. The champion is like, oh, your dash is, is up very frequently when you're trying to kill someone because yep. you can jump in, get your auto attacks on them. Uh, but it's harder to find that cooldown refund when you are, you know, es uh, escaping, obviously. But uh, tags the wolf there uh, for a little bit of a refund. It gets out. No harm, no foul. Immortals, though. Just transition back over to the other side of the map, pushing up towards the last oh, one. Whoop. Left! I heard a flash. I see damage from Tactical. Sidesteps the crowd control. <laughs> able to get away. That zap would have meant his death, but he's safe. Yeah, tactical again. This one, he had uh, no flash of his own to uh, evade, so just walks his way out. Revenge does wow. finish up the tower and draws uh, the ignite, but has to flash for it. So longer cooldown exchange there. Cooldown, but maybe the ignite means one to keep it. What's going to happen soon? Keep in mind. Hmm. 
Dragons up in two minutes. TL would get to Soul Point if they claim it. The Mortis makes it two to two. It's going to be a while until that one's going to come across. But Baron, obviously, the maybe more important objective on the table right now. See if Immortals can take an efficient control to make that a possibility. I want to see if Team Liquid can ever get m much out of this victor as well. Uh, you know, because we're getting into the stage of the game where if you've been telling your team the whole time, we're scaling, we're scaling, we're scaling, now they want their returns, okay? Uh, they had the they had the early investments. Uh, see if he can actually get a, you know, good gravity field placements. Uh, there are definitely a lot of options for kills on Immortals. Gwen is definitely uh, a very difficult one to pin down for the team, but everybody else, if you've got Braum and you've got uh, gravity Destiny. field from, from Victor, oh, maybe. It's gonna land, Braum in the front, big explosive cast, but it's Destiny, shut down instantly. Core was there, it was a bait the whole time. All right, that is the pick to open up some breathing room from them. Ultimate gonna go wide, don't think the execution uh, would be able to finish it off anyways, but Team Liquid, they get the support. It's not one of the big bounties, so not not big uh, cash in there, but uh, some some decent little uh, leeway as far as setting up your vision to protect against a, a Baron pickup here for two, our mortals. Two power spikes just came through, though. Cosmic Drive done for Jensen. Menamune done for Tactical. That's going to transform the Romana in, in mere moments. Yeah. So those will definitely be online at full power in time for Ocean Drake. Even though Raze has more gold, he is still slowly on his route to item three. So 80 carries, you can consider to be at fairly similar power levels, despite the 1,000 gold difference between them. All right. Can they even get in to clear out that control ward? Uh, Core JJ has exhaust ready as well. So happy to play the front line, happy to disengage the rest of the team while throwing down exhaust on, uh, uh, on revenge. They, do, they don't have a good flank for uh, for Jenkins, though. So it's going to make a long route around the back of this dragon. Raze is, kind of, is actually the most vulnerable one on that side. And they only have this blue trinket in the ward behind red to actually see the path. But they're just okay. making a beeline towards mid once again. They give up the dragon. Uh, their wave is pretty far behind. So Team Liquid, actually, all you have to do is commit one person to the dragon and try and get everybody else back over to mid. Cannon minion. That turret's going to lose a lot of health, but Immortals... What else are you getting here? They're not even committing the resources, even though, as you mentioned, they Riotto. were there. They could have gone for it. They do damage that, by the way, will regen off that turret. It'll be back to full in a couple of minutes. And all they do is give away soul point to Team Liquid. Honestly thought they were going to make the harder push and, like, you know, everybody else uh, charge up the lane with Insanity. Yeah. Because if they did have, you know, even just raise, honestly, they they, they would have had a, a, a chance to actually significantly junk it. Right. But Team Liquid, they recognize the move immediately and they're like, okay, we only need one person at Dragon. Then everybody else start kind of trailing up through the jungle and threaten the flank on them so that they don't stick to it. Agree. I like Immortals a lot more with Insanity. He's been very good. I'm, I'm a big fan of him. I thought he was very strong last year, even though Immortals looked a lot more lackluster. I think he was always solid. And uh, Immortals definitely, I think, one of my big teams to watch in the summer split in the season overall. And he's a large reason why. Five out of six participation, plenty of gold. I think he's the gold leader of the game itself. Keep watching him in these fights for sure. But yes, I am perplexed by the mid-game shot calling where they give up Dragon and their mid lane outer for, at best, a minion wave. They had quite a few good choices in the early stages to set them up here, but if you get caught sleeping against Team Liquid, you will regret it already. You mentioned Soul Point, three and a half minutes, so uh, kind of floating around possibilities of, uh, of healing cutting here. But honestly, with how many threats that TL, TL have as well, I like that it, it is a full tank Xin Zhao. Yeah. So Braum plus full tank Xin Zhao actually can buy you so much time. And you can pull off the fabled Zinsec. It gives yes. you a lot of confidence to go, basically, if you W in on somebody and then take the charge and flash over to try and uh, use Zin ultimate to knock back someone you have not autoed yet, primarily a Lucian or a Jinx freak, right. uh, then you can make one of those big highlight plays, which is very rarely seen. Uh, and I really, really hope that we get it from Santorin because tank build, like that that's one of the mm -hmm. only main benefits of it. You do get to stick in there a bit longer. You do get to go for more of those um, yeah, audacious uh, plays, I would say. Nice, and and this is one of the fun things actually about uh, champs with adaptable builds is it lends them to being early pick. Okay, we want a strong jungler who has gank pressure, who can who can frontline whatever. Okay, we'll grab Sinjao. Okay, based on the draft, we need a tank. Oh, I'll just do this build then. Follow up. 
if a champion is, say, 54% win rate in Diamond also Plus and good. above and has five, six viable builds, uh, we might need to look into yes. it. I do like flexibility, though. I honestly w am a proponent of bringing back AP variants for champions that are not usually AP builds. I know that that is like just that general premise is kind of frowned upon, and they, and there's, uh, you know, consciously steering away from it. But uh, I always found it quite hilarious and funny yeah. when you get uh, like AP Tristana's full bursting people and stuff like that. The goal is fringe viability, as far as I can tell. It's never yeah. to overtake the main build. So like AP Twitch is not allowed to be the best. Twitch. AP Master Yi, you maybe well. You that was a little toxic. That stuff coming in. Yeah. 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 So. We are here, though, and looking at a Baron pretty soon. Oh, they see Insanity. He gets rooted. That boy is almost dead. The Flash follows Sin Zhao, does not have enough damage to kill him, does not take the fourth attack to get stunned away. And now Revenge, as he want back in, of course, cannot be easily re-hit. He has the W available if needed, and it is a Flash forced away. You know, the saddest part of that play, Freak? Yeah. Since the Zinsec is much less likely without a flash on Zin Zhao. That's true. <laughs> and he tried to follow it up. I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, well, burning Lucian Flash is pretty big, but uh, but my Zinsec. Uh. Yeah, and he has E and Gale Force. So like, of all the champs to lose <laughs> yeah. Flash on, Lucian is maybe the safest. Oh, well, it's okay. By the way, next dragon spawning in 50 seconds. Immortals have not shown a desire to take these away. TL, by the way, I believe it's three dragons straight. Immortals got the very first one of the game and have not rested control of the bottom river. Now with the scuttle here, it's impossible to not have vision control when the dragon spawns. It is guaranteed for them. I want to see if they actually stand their grounds. Immortals are the winning team. They're up 4,000 gold. Oof. They should be taking these objectives. Revenge a little slow on that W, I think, with the, uh, the arrow actually landing and getting a little chunk on him. Can heal up a little bit here, though. Uh, not too difficult for Gwen. They've got full vision in the jungle, but look at Akali on the minimap. I think they got vision off of the uh, the yep. ward he just killed. There are two control wards here too, so they immediately send people to spot Jenkins. So the main thing here for Immortals are kind of trying to keep a tracker on this level 16 Akali. It's the most dangerous thing to them right and now. Jenkins getting into it. the back line. Burning it fast. Destiny trying to zone. He could go for the box to zone them out. Now it's going to die in time anyway. And there's going to body slam away. No easy chase. Doesn't even have to burn the ulti to guarantee it. It is just Immortals swinging in, claiming it. And TL just drilling to the party. Don't even get mid push either. I mean, the wave is gone, but... If they wanted to say, screw it, Dragon's yours, they could have gone for the turret itself. Instead, it will just be a bit of CS crashing, no turret kill. Yeah, very tricky timing there for Team Liquid with without having uh, great vision on it because uh, Jenkins wants to get, you know, the, the flank off at the exact timing uh, that they have Santorin stepping into the river, but they miscalculate a little bit there, and these dragons are burning like paper. So we again have another kind of hands up in the air freak for a dragon. This one goes poof in the in the opposite favor. Immortals happy to, to pick that one up. We'll say there uh, for Jensen though, cresting the 300 CS mark there for Victor um, is, oh, can he get the combine as well? Yes, does get the combine. Uh, for full magic, magic penetration here. So this is now three spike Victor. Now you get to see the explosive damage yeah. uh, on the side of Team Liquid. I have to say, even with all the early leads there from Immortals, they have to be very cautious heading to these team fights. There are so many things. Xin is going to be running straight for you, uh, straight up the middle here with the full tank build. Jenkins constantly flirting around the opposite side looking for the flank. Okay, Akali pushing in the bottom lane. Immortals walking Aport. up a bit. They want to control Baron as they knocked down the control wards. They are, in fact, the team that does so. It's Team Liquid playing with Fog, but they are split pushing. They are trying to force Immortals to react to that. And as many of the members are seen walking back out through mid, especially with Rays attacking this, they know Baron is not on the table yet. I have to say, it's actually very difficult for both these AD carries now because Team Liquid have, have scaled so much with you know, controlling these dragons, keeping the gold lead close, that now you are faced as one of these two AD carries trying to fight into a Xin Zhao Braum front line, some of the most annoying for AD carries because of the ultimate, uh, because of the zone control, but then also with the pretty decently fed, even just with a single kill there, uh, Jenkins level 16, a Kali flank with teleport being ready. There are a lot of things to keep your eyes on for these AD carries, so I think I actually put a lot of weight on Destiny's Thresh in his positioning and keeping them both safe, because it's it's really hard to keep your eyes on both AD carries and keep them both safe yeah. uh, and watching for that flank. And heck, there's even three in the game, so 
and have fun tracking everybody properly here as the items keep going through. Zerxay going for Bruiser AP. Zonia's done. Banshee's on the way. Uh, we mentioned the mandate a while ago, but it's also you know just a bit more supportive overall. But does add some extra magic damage threat. Uh, Gwen might not always be enough, so that's going to add up and complement the double physical damage marksman pretty nicely. Next dragon spawns in two minutes. It would still be Ocean Soul for Team Liquid. Uh, generally speaking, should feel pretty good against Marksman. Any consistent damage team fears Ocean Drake a bit more uh, as you just kind of really dial down that DPS functionally. Zerse rounds out his full playmaking build, by the way, for Gragas. He's got the spell shield now with Banshees on top of Azonia's, on top of Utility uh, Mythic here. Really, really excited to see if he's able to pull off one of the, the big Gragas plays because everybody's got their summoners available since we've been uh, cautiously just clearing waves, ping ponging it, and clearing out the vision now. So it's all about your flash timing, uh, these spell shoots, and these immunities coming down to who gets that pick. I will say it feels a little bit more stable for Team Liquid with, uh, with Brahm Zin Zhao being able to force out some space from Immortals, but because Immortals get into the river first and they get their, their vision clearing done first, uh, you can have the advantage there, especially with the added kind of uh, wild card threat of a spell shield Gragas. So of note, the trinket choice for Jenkins is Sweeper, which means he cannot ward for himself outside of Control Wars, making it very hard to push aggressively because uh, obviously Corte J is busy dealing with Baron right now, and so Never any wards means Jenkins can't really attack that bot lane tier 2 turret despite being the split push leader. Now fight goes over the bottom river. Enough wards that both teams feel safe. The Baron's not being snuck. TL the first to clear mid, but it's still 35 seconds away. I think that trinket choice is kind of indicative of what Team Liquid as a team are looking for. Uh, do you want to have extra vision for your split push, or do you want the sweeper for making sure that your flank is unseen? Oh, wow. Instantly attacking, though the double marksman not going to be the healthiest as they wait for this team to come around. But yes, they are forcing TL over. TP coming in for a call. He's here comes the flank. This is Team Liquid taking the fight now. 7k health is plenty on Baron. No rush at that one. Stun's going to land. Oh. He's damaged and Destiny pops the locket. Jenkins spotted. Flash the safety. Over he goes. Burns the Zonias. And the rest of the team comes in. Tactical finds one. Jenkins ideally has R2. Doesn't have a good target, though. And they're going to run away. Destiny is down. TL get one for nothing. They get one flank to rule them all. Jenkins just needs to pin them in for the hard engage and Team Liquid forcing on the Baron as well. Immortals definitely plenty of damage still, but they've got very, very few options for setting up that damage. Destiny's dead and Zerse is out of the fight. Chomper's down, couple of slows in as well. Center on a half, they say, you know what? We can at least go for the Ocean Drake, Ocean Soul. We've got Smite available, no problem there. At best, you can steal Jenkins. Ooh. Nearly killed by the Heroics of Insanity, goes in. Oh! Shut down and Revenge, you are next. You're not getting away from this one. Team Liquid take the fight down 4K, and they get a three for nothing. Immortals were completely split on that hero play, Freak. That was only the solo laners for Immortals looking on the quick attempt at a kill onto Jenkins. Uh, he's able to get out of it and they easily have the entire team collapse while Immortals are kind of split on that red. This Cast is going to be... is going to be the hope. Not going to happen. Zoned away. Health bars too low. Claimed Ocean Soul for Team Liquid. I think that's about going to do it there for Team Liquid, even with the gold deficit. Uh, they just have so many more options on how to play this out. Now with the Ocean Soul regeneration as well, the, the Jin Zhao really just gets to to run kind of this split through your team. Centaurin easily can tank up the Baron, so it's not just an Ocean Soul. It's going to be crazy sieging power, and they also have the better split push threat, so a yep. uh, lot of options here for Team Liquid. Okay, Revenge Unless teleports snap. in. Rocket going to be easily tanked, no okay. problem. But what about the team fight? Okay, Ray spotted by Jenkins. You don't have a good way out. That is effortless. Well played, though. Jenkins plays it right. Santorin walking away. Big damage. He's armor stacked, so Revenge can take him down. But he's left alone. He's got a bit of immunity, but not enough ways out. Jenkins is on for a second. Time for his third. Xerxe gets found out. Is that the quadra kill? Yes, it is. Welcome to the LCS, Jenkins. You're looking great. Is that Jenkins Akali, baby? Because he is annihilated.
Annihilating Immortals, left alone with the juicy targets, takes out both AD carries, cleans it up, and racks up another W here for TL. Beautifully done there. They got behind, but top diff. It's like the roster never changed. Jenkins looking great. TL winning through the top lane, finding the flanks, finding the fights, and getting what they needed. A slobber knocker, a 37 minute game, but a win in the end. Congratulations, Team Liquid, on win number 15. And he did so much of it himself in the early game. Take yourself back, Freak, to the early stages where Immortals controlling all these early objectives, getting early kill after early kill, snowballing fairly effectively. And what do we say? The one thing going for Team Liquid at that time, the Jenkins 1v1. Yep. He consistently put it up, pressure on the top side, uses the Ignite. He actually finally got that solo kill on the Gwen, then is able to add that critical flank to the team fight for them and bring it all together for yep. Team Liquid. They bide their time. They did complete. They did good on the promise of scaling Freak. They did. <laughs> and they did. Here we go. There we go. Yes. That is what you want to see. Good job, uh. Jenkins. <laughs> yes. Love seeing it. Absolutely love seeing it. A well-deserved trophy hoist. Honestly, the trophy top laner. On the Immortal side, though, you, you can't feel good. You started that game out 6-0 with three kills on Lucian, three kills on Jinx. And somehow, you gave away three straight dragons. And in only one of those cases did you do anything about that. Okay, one case you trade dragon for two turrets. I like that play. You're, you're heading gold. Cool, now you have map control. Then they gave away dragon number four for three autos on a next yeah. turret. Or inhibitor turret. That's not okay, Immortals. That needed to be cleaned up. Woo! What what a fun one. I love it when we get to a little yeah. Night Shyamalan twist at the end mm -hmm. as well here. What up Jenkins, this? Jenkins in the spotlight, uh, uh, you know, on stage as well. The team rallying around him. Uh, you love to see that as well, not just within the game performance from Team Liquid, but the camaraderie on stage after as well with, with so much of this, you know, drama actually, you know, circulating sure, sure. With, with all the, the recent circumstances there for Team Liquid. So... Happy to sh show a united front in game and out of game. Yes. They get tilt proof uh, for basically the entire bottom side of the map <laughs> rewarded. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, everybody's probably given the uh, the after game. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that is a that is a four X honor for Jenkins every single time. He gets the little knock up saying you're very honorable this game. Congratulations. <laughs> a little it's, leaf. Yeah. It's on the loading screen border the next game because he got you know more than one honor from his pre made. So that was good. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to bias the vote, although it's just us and the analysts like. I, I'm voting Jenkins player of the game for that one. <gasps> Kobe, are you also? Wait, let me do my uh, uh, shocked Pikachu face. Is, is, that, <laughs> is that good? I because it, it's not a lot of it's it's oh. not a lot of like you yeah. know emotive. Yeah, it's there. a little bit. So I think I feel like, I feel yeah. like nailed it. You know what? Uh, Mild honestly, shock. Honestly, uh, it is going to be super nice as well for uh, you know for for the team to get just a win back on the board sure. uh, to to end the week with. So yeah. uh, like how they're able to solidify here some of some of the identity for the team as well after all the changes. Yeah, it, it is weird that the ended, the identity for this week is like comebacks where like the EG game was like real scrappy and then and obviously you know I think loss at the very end, which is an unluckers, but uh, at least coming away is good. We'll see TL, of course, a lot more. 21 more games to play. They're still top four in the standings. Now, we are heading over to the stage where Latigris is standing by with the perfect human himself for our Verizon post-game interview. The perfect human being, Core JJ, gracing us with his presence here on the stage. Now, that game definitely started with some Immortals advantages, despite some dragon control by Team Liquid. But how do you feel Team Liquid pulled off the victory? Yeah, it was a really tough game. They played really well in early game. They used their advantage really well. But um, we had uh, Jenkins Akali, so we, go late, we went late game. Yeah, we saw some really good flanks from him that really turned the tide of the team fights. Was he calling for that, or was it you or somebody else telling him to do so? Uh, he, I don't know, he didn't just, he, I don't think he even called it. He just, like, did it. <laughs> <laughs> he did it, he was there, he made it work, and yeah. the rest of the team did too. Yeah, I just realized that he got, like, triple kill, quadra kill, like, something after everything happened. 
Oh, yeah, it was a quadra. It was a pretty yeah. sick one. You had some sick moments, too, though, specifically on the Braum, making sure to react very quickly when Destiny was trying to make things happen. Were you worried at all about him being back on the Thresh pick? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about his Thresh pick because, like, I know, I knew his Thresh is pretty good. But I also knew my Braum is pretty, pretty good. But it this game didn't didn't go what I expected. Yeah, definitely defied some expectations there with the plays in the end. But we already know your Braum to be good. We know you to be a perfect human being. <laughs> now we know that you have broken the highest LP record in solo queue. What was your reaction to finding that out? Uh, you know, I actually didn't know what was the, the highest LP until I asked to the Tajan. <laughs> And then he said, it's like 17, 38. So it felt pretty good to break it. And then, I don't know, like if I hit 2K, it, it looks more, even cooler. I want to look, I want to look for it. Yeah, the 2K, definitely a lot yeah. cooler than I in the commas there. Core JJ, we wish you the best in your pursuits of that 2K. And thanks for stopping on by. Thank you for inviting me. What a TL game that we just had, a W for them. We will continue with the action on the other side of this break. See you there. Thank you.